So when you encounter the word faith, what do you think of? If you grew up in a religion that required you to say a list of what you were supposed to believe, maybe you think of a profession of faith. Or perhaps you think of a character named Faith from a TV show or movie or book. Or you knew someone named Faith who had a strong impact on your life. Or maybe you immediately start singing George Michael's 1987 song in your head. Oh yeah, I gotta have faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. Ah. Yes, perfect, excellent. <laughs> and you are welcome for that earworm that will now be with you all day. When I think about faith, I often think about Mr. Rogers. On his show for children, he famously said that when he was a boy and would see scary things in the news, his mother would tell him, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Mr. Rogers, a Presbyterian minister, was gifted at taking difficult concepts and distilling them so that children could understand them. And I think that's part of what he and his mother uh, were distilling in the phrase, look for the helpers, was to have faith. Not faith in a deity, not faith in something separate or apart, but faith in each other. Faith in what could be. Have faith, they were saying, in the power of love and connectedness. This understanding of faith does not require a divine being. It can have room for one, but it does not require one. This is the kind of faith that Sharon Salzberg talks about in her book that we just heard a reading from entitled Faith. Salzberg is a Buddhist teacher, and so she comes at the concept of faith from a little bit different of a perspective, perhaps, than the more common Christian views that we hear in general culture and in media. But faith is important in Buddhism, too, where many believe that it is through a personal experience with the truth of what the Buddha taught that practitioners develop faith in Buddha's path of practice and in their own potential for enlightenment. In our Unitarian Universalist congregations, we maybe don't use the word faith very often, and yet I think we talk about it all the time. Not faith as a profession of belief, but as that which gives our lives meaning and purpose. Not just something we have and hold dearly, but something that we act upon. Faith as a journey without truly knowing where that journey will lead or what we might encounter on the journey. Interestingly enough, in many languages, in Hebrew and in Latin and in Pali, faith is not a noun. It's not something that we have. Faith is something that we do. It is a verb. We faith. This is the kind of faith that Salzburg talks about in her book. It is about the journey not the destination, not where we end up. So the 1994 classic muse movie, The Shawshank Redemption, actually provides an excellent lens through which we can look at this understanding of faith and the connected concepts of trust and hope. Now, this movie came out 30 years ago, so I'm hoping that any spoilers are okay with you. <laughs> The movie tells the story of banker Andy, who is sentenced to life in Shawshank State Penitentiary. Over the following two decades, he befriends a fellow prisoner, the contraband smuggler Red. Over time, Andy becomes instrumental in a money laundering operation led by the prison warden. When Andy gets new evidence that could prove his innocence, he shares it with the warden, trusting that the warden will help Andy to reopen his case. This is the essence of trust, having confidence in someone or something and that they will fulfill their obligations and responsibilities. 
Andy has built up a little bit of trust in the warden who has allowed Andy little privileges like converting a storage room to a library or keeping some contraband in his cell. So Andy trusts that the warden will be reasonable and help Andy reopen his case. The warden, however, does not want to lose his cheap, extremely effective banker become money launderer and soon proves that Andy's trust was misplaced. The warden has Andy beaten up and put in solitary confinement for two months and murders the prisoner who brought this new evidence to light. As a result of this experience, Andy loses hope in the justice system, in ever being released from prison. Hope is that powerful belief that things will get better, that we will arrive at the destination even though the journey may be hard. Andy loses hope just like he lost trust in the warden, but Andy does not lose faith. He is still on the journey, even if the destination for him may have changed. It turns out Andy has slowly, over the course of 20 years, been carving a hole in his prison wall, a hole that was covered through the years by various posters. And on the night of some loud thunderstorms, Andy goes through the hole and escapes. He runs off to Mexico to start a new life. But the story doesn't end there. Red believed he would never get parole. Every parole hearing repeatedly for decades, his parole was denied. And then one year, surprisingly, he was granted parole. Now, before escaping, Andy had told his friend Red to go to a particular field and look for a particular rock to see what was underneath. Red trusts Andy. He has confidence in him. And so eventually, Red makes it to the field where he finds money and a note from Andy suggesting that Red join Andy in Mexico. Red had difficulty adjusting to life on the outside and had begun to lose hope that anything good was in store for him, but he has faith in his friend. And so Red gets a bus ticket and heads south. In the end, Andy and Red are united on, reunited on a Mexican beach. Now, as both Andy and Red's stories demonstrate, faith is the journey, not the destination. It's not the beach itself. Faith says, I do not know what will happen on this journey, but I am going to travel it anyway. Everything may or may not be all right, but that's actually besides the point. Faith is trusting that even if we don't have hope right now, we will find hope again one day if we stay on the journey. This is why it is so devastating when we lose faith. Salzburg says she believes that the true opposite of faith is the sundering of connection. The desolate certainty that the cherry trees will never bloom again. It is the experience, she says, of utter isolation and despair. Red was losing hope after his parole. He found himself following the same path as Brooks. Brooks was the old librarian who had suddenly been released from prison after 50 years and had been unable to adapt to life on the outside. He had lost hope, certainly, but Brooks had also lost faith and experienced utter isolation, disconnection, and despair, which ultimately led him to taking his own life. Salzburg says it is faith that helps us to approach life with a sense of possibility rather than foreboding or helplessness. Though Red himself begins to lose hope upon his release, he does not lose faith. He remembers what Andy told him about the rock and the field, and he holds on to a sense of possibility and connection. Red keeps faith and continues on his journey. Now, I would guess that Red didn't immediately go and find that rock upon his parole because, well, even though he trusted Andy, that just seems a bit far-fetched, right? I mean, really? Faith may be the journey, 
but it is not one that comes without doubts. Not at all. Indeed, Salzburg says that doubt is an essential part of what it means to have faith. And from the Christian tradition, Anglican priest Kenneth Leach agrees. He wrote that doubt is not the enemy of faith, but an essential element of it. For faith does not bring the false peace of answered questions and resolved paradoxes. Because faith is not the destination. My own first model for the compatibility of faith and doubt came from my grandmother. She was devoted to her church. She had known more than her share of suffering, and her Christian faith was the cornerstone of her life and sustained her. One time, as a young adult, soon after becoming a Unitarian Universalist, I might have been grilling her on her faith. <laughs> And she smiled and shook her head and admitted she didn't know the answers to my questions. Ha! I had won! <laughs> but then she told me that doubt was an important part of her faith. That doubt was like butterflies always flitting around her. Doubt was always there, but for her, it never took hold. Doubt as butterflies, questions as butterflies. As Unitarian Universalists, we are encouraged to doubt, to ask questions. We sang one of my favorite hymns earlier. We laugh, we cry, and in one of the verses is the phrase, and in our search for peace, maybe we'll finally see even to question truly is an answer. And then there is a very popular reading in our hymnal by the Reverend Robert Terry Weston. It starts with, cherish your doubts, for doubt is the attendant of truth. Doubt is the key to the door of knowledge. It is the servant of discovery. For Unitarian Universalists, our search for truth and meaning is a way that we have faith. And oh, we like to question everything, don't we? I have no concern here about any of you following me unquestioningly. In fact, I'm sure, <laughs> right? <laughs> In fact, I'm sure that some of you are sitting here right now saying, yeah, this word still just doesn't work for me. <laughs> and that is okay because two of the values that we Unitarian Universalists hold most dear as you use our freedom of the pulpit, for me to say from the pulpit what I feel called to say, and freedom of the pew, freedom for you to decide if the words you hear from the pulpit have merit and work for you. And this, is precisely why I believe the word faith is an important word for Unitarian Universalists to understand and to use. We have so much faith. We have faith when we search for truth and meaning, when we say that we are not creedal but covenantal. That's talking about faith in each other and that even though we will fail time and time again, we are able to come back and try again. That's faith. We have faith that the moral arc of the universe is long, but that it bends towards justice, and so we work to build the beloved community. We have faith in the journey itself, faith that asks questions, that helps us approach life with a sense of possibility rather than foreboding, faith that connects us, that causes us to move, to reach for what we don't yet know with a measure of courage, faith as an ability to act on hope, knowing that the way may be hard and the path may be unclear, but it is the journey that matters, not where we end up. We have faith, beloveds. Oh, yes. We have faith. After all, you got to have faith. The faith. May it be so. And blessed be.